Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stoneface Directions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and that's Shy, and we're here to watch more Simpho Gear, where uh, lots of stuff is happening. But I think before we start talking about the episode, uh, I think we just want to start off with a couple other things. Uh, Theta, why don't you go ahead and roll us into a couple of what we want to cover first. Well, I guess first up, we'll thank the, uh, the Patreon uh, user that uh, asked for this on our uh, monthly one episode thing, so thank you to Ghost to Marsh. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, I guess we have a comment response from the last video. Needs Ooh, to be nice said. Big comments. I can go to one of you. Uh, Shai, you my read voice. this one off? Uh, Shai? What, you wanted me to do it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's see it. What? what? All right. Uh, I, I see why. It looks like they're calling me out at getting upset at something. Oh, no. uh, Joe Russell says, I think the main and immediate reason that Subasa doesn't like Hibiki is that relics aren't supposed to be usable by anyone. Uh, Gungnir was Kanade's and therefore no one else should be using it. And yet here is some nobody that can use it without any training, without any knowledge of some figures beforehand. Genjiro mentioned in this episode that Tsubasa has been training since she was a little girl, and Kanade also had some training, but Hibiki was just basically wrong place at the wrong time and gifted with Kanade's relic. So it's a bit of a slap in the face. Secondly, when she finds out that this is the girl that Kanade sacrificed herself to save, a bit irrational, sure, but there you go. Yeah, that kind of checks out with everything <laughs> that we've kind of seen so far, right? Yeah, it didn't need to be explained. I'm just personally don't like it. I don't like that character trope. I'm 27 and bored of it. I'm gonna throw this out at you, Shy. Not everything is an attack on you, okay? It was in response to me specifically. I'm the only one who cared. You're 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 an adult. You're past all like the teenage uh, angst phase, and it's starting to get bored. Totally understand yeah. it. I think you'll also find that a uh... characters, but also I just I'm bored of that character type. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I also have to say that as someone who lives in the comment response section of our videos, people just like to explain things that they see. Oh, sure. Also true. Got to make sure we're all on the same page after all. So, uh, I guess let's talk about uh, what we remember from last time and what what we think is going to happen this time. Uh, I believe last time, like the common mostly said, we got uh, uh, Hibiki. Uh, yeah, yeah, Hibiki is the character, yeah. Hibiki mm -hmm. went through a big process of being inducted into all the uh, conspiracy that's happening, or whatever the group is called. I, I don't remember what it was called. Uh, and of course, with Tsubasa just kind of being very antagonistic about that, to the point that I think the episode ended off with uh, Hibiki trying to help, and Tsubasa saying, let's fight. So, very, very classic anime right there. Well, I mean, a lot of the episode was them going to the, um... Does anybody remember the name of the facility? No, i lucky I remember the main character's name right now, honestly. I just know it's underneath, like, the musical high school. Yeah, I remember there was the the long elevator. Um, sorry, I just, every time I, see, I remember that scene, it's like spies like us. Mm -hmm. You know, where they go down the super long elevator, where it seems like they're falling. Um, yeah, with the guy with the red um, red suit, or at least red shirt, red pants, top hat, and I believe the which one of you described the woman as a hippie? Probably me. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was our their main uh, control facility that we yeah, saw the support crew that we saw in the first episode, but didn't know where they were. I guess. Yeah, last last we saw them in the first episode was uh being crushed under a bunch of rubble, so they did get out of that okay. Don't remember that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, uh, Hibiki and Blue Girl. Sorry, I know her name starts with a T. I know it's in the I know it's in the comment I could easily tab over to, but I'm trying to work off of my own memory. Yeah, okay. Hibiki, Hibiki, Hibiki clearly misread the situation going on between them at the very end, and uh, yeah, 
They drew up that shade. Shay, Shay, words are hard today. It's okay. Words are hard for me every day. Don't worry about the it. The trope that Shy hates so much, but you know, I'm not in love with it. But at the same time, I'm not tired of it because I like the let's find out whose power level is higher. But on our main characters trope, I don't mind oh, that right. at all. I just don't like this character's attitude. Uh, so I think looking ahead into the episode, then, obviously the thing is that's going to happen is the fight. The question is, how is it going to conclude, or what's going to happen? And kind of the rest of the episode after that is kind of up in the air. It could be anything. I'm putting my money down on everybody dies. Right here, um, right now, this is the event. All I know is someone's getting schooled, and I don't know if it's the kid who needs to be schooled, or the kid who needs to be told to shut up and sit down. Uh, I think you'll find that they're both going to school. Um, I'm going to bet on uh, new girl Hibiki is going to uh, somehow have far more power for absolutely no reason. I mean, we already know she dies in two years, so... Right, exactly. So, we, we gotta we gotta up the stakes here a little bit, I think. Doesn't she only have, like, a fragment of the Simpho gear, too? That'd be hilarious if she was stronger. Mm -hmm. Like, just exponentially, just <laughs> way better. Just for absolutely no reason, right. Well, I mean, she has the part of the Simpho gear... Of the person who died. So I don't know if that reads to that person's skill or that person's power level. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, I guess the only thing we have to do is uh, watch and find out then. Mm. All right, we're getting a little bit of the. Uh... No, this is a completely different area. Yeah. So we're just gonna just flash so forwards over making it? sure we're watching the same thing. Episode uh, three. Blue girl just cut up a giant hot dog in a meadow, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, just making sure. We we just get in the montage now? Oh it's oh they just skipped over the potential fight then just like ah a month later. Yeah, so that was just a moment in their lives. Not the one we had to see, I guess. That or they're gonna do an episode number one again. Where, you know, we're at her grave and we flash back and we flash forwards again. We're just gonna have a sequence of flashbacks of people at different graves. Oh, no, no, I mean, like... about the last person who was at the last grave? No, I mean, like, we're here a month ahead. And they're like, oh, you're not working together right. Don't you remember a month ago when you fought one another? And we go back to that again. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that could happen. I mean, there's going to be very few explanations that are going to be... Otherwise, why are you just going to skip fight scenes to show us other fight scenes? This is still a nice beat. I still like this. Just such I a. I can't believe some of the enemies are just giant hot dogs. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, so far oh, they've been. What's more threatening than a hot dog? Nothing. I mean, you know, so far they've been dog. random everything because there's been like no unifying factor. And they're them. they're amorphous it's just, blobs. It's just it's like it's like literally a wiener. It's like literally a big sausage with legs. It's silly. <laughs> my favorite one. Uh, passing the night. You're right, someone was gonna die. They know you got it. On wide menace of... Ah, uh, uh, we're gonna have to go back and get that still frame later. I feel you. You gotta <laughs> solve the homework for him. <laughs> Already missing exams. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's me energy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not asleep, I swear. I mean, it probably doesn't help that the person who's wide awake has all the drinks on their side of the table. <laughs> that's why they're wide awake. Oh, here we go, flashback. Don't you remember a month ago? The music in the background could have easily switched to the Evangelion theme, <laughs> and it would have played well. Take the super elevator. 
That, he really no, does not look like uh, Alexander the Great from Fate. I, skinnier. I think that's something you said last time. I know, I just can't get over it. It's been a month, that's up just I just said I'm reminding you, it's reminding me. Yeah. I also thought he was gonna go into the tube and transform himself. If he transforms himself, I'm just gonna be so surprised. <laughs> I do feel like Blue here would be the perfect girl to get the speech from uh, Kill a Kill. Alright, she hasn't like pulled out a weapon yet. We also had that conversation about what her weapon might be. I believe Shy looked it up. I think we went deep on a um, ruby stint on different weapons. Probably. <laughs> He's not trying to take anyone's place. You're very confused. The, the sergeant keeps growing. It's a Gurren Logan of sorts. Ah, uh, he didn't transform, but he's still softened with a fist. The East is burning red! Why isn't he yeah, out there fighting? Power. He doesn't even need Simpo Gears. He's the Master Asia of this uh, series. <laughs> Why would you rent them? How's he frugal, Theta? If you're frugal, you buy them, but you don't rent it. Ah, uh, yes, that'll make her feel better. So you're about to get slapped. <laughs> yeah, at that, at that point, uh, at that point, slap her. You actually deserve it at that point. I'll, I will be a Subasa sympathizer in that instance. <laughs> I really like the uh, background uh, piano. Oh yeah, solo piano doing just a sad theme. That piano as a hot dog is destroyed. That hot dog is my favorite character. I don't think we got this moment back in episode one, did we? <clears throat> I feel like somebody must have a cut out there of this show that puts everything chronological order. <laughs> Sounds like uh, Dead Girl was just describing Hibiki and Subas is projecting. Weak. Hungry, stupid. Girl, I get it, but don't take it out on Hibiki. I guess there's like a side, um. Uh, the only working numbering now is problem. Anyone you love that dies to the noise turns into a pile of dust, right? 
So some people are obviously thinking, cool, I don't have to pay for cremation. But on the other hand, there's a lot of religious beliefs out there that would... That's the worst thing that could happen. Can't even put on the sweater right. See? Well, if she did it on purpose to hide her crying, cool, this is a great emotional scene. If not, then our one of our main characters is a real dumbass. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of uh, been the portrayal so far. Not dumbass, but like a uh, ditzy and confused normal girl. A ditz can put a shirt on. Oh, I thought they were about to do uh, some <laughs> therapy together. It's like, nope, it's mission time. <laughs> Lots of blips. I mean, maybe that's the therapy. Work it out through physical activity. Mechanical. I guess that's one way to get the expedition. Someone did their homework assignment on it. Alright, hear me out. If she's battling the noise, she should be exempt from noise classes. Yeah, automatic A. Given that they're underneath the school, they gotta have some kind of pull, right? They gotta cheat for her, yeah? Well, I mean, at least that character, her, is directly linked to the school. <clears throat> like, she works there. I mean, I'd argue if she's like a main force for fighting the noise, she'd be so dead. she should be exempt from a lot of stuff. That's what I'm saying. Not just the one class, I mean, like, life on the line. Oh, I mean, sure, but no school's gonna exempt you just because they feel like it, you know? At least, they'll at least give you the relevant thing, I hope. Like, as my thought process goes back to, like, assassination classroom. Hey, kill your teacher, a billion dollars, don't care about anything for the rest of your life. Pretty much. That was a good show. I liked it a lot. Didn't finish it. It was worth it. その力を発揮できないけれど、完全状態の生物は一度起動した後は100%の力を常時発揮し、さらには、奏者以外の人間も使用できるであろうと研究の結果が出ているんだ。それが私の提唱したサクライエロ。だけど完全生物の軌道に
I don't know. I'm just really hoping the final blo final boss of the show is either Jack Black or Kanye or even both. Jack Black across Kanye. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to make it a little bit more obscure, like make it the devil from the pick of Destiny. I mean, that too. I just think it would be funny if it ends up being Kanye and this whole thing is just one ego trip. The noise, he just made them because people oh, God. attention to him. If it's Kanye, then the the next to final boss has to be the hologram of her dead friend. Damn. Who of course has to also praise Kanye. Who's back as a zombie and it's like, yeah, praise Yeezy. No, no, I, I, I think you're, you're still kind of upset. That, that, that's also not technically a true statement, but it's the yeah, it's pop music. <laughs> Episode 3 is way too early to have thoughts like this. How many episodes is this again? Is it a 24 one? Whoa, whoa, she's a child! Oh my god, you're... you're... <laughs> I... Alright. The juxtaposition between, well, I guess mankind is cursed to always be at war, and then immediately into, I want to pop your cherry. Yeah, let's just not address that character ever again. Oh, jeez. Look, she's a hippie. It was a different time in the 70s, alright? People got arrested I for a lot of fewer things. I'm not engaging with this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, this girl has two girls on either side of her feeding her. She's real popular, eh? Well, you heard it here. It's is, not an anime. This is the Yuri harem of, of the century. Badminton. We're getting a badminton episode. Yeah, that's just like the casual high school girl group. <laughs> what, if, what if we got a badminton episode? Only if it's a crossover with Prince of Tennis. Also, this is definitely the way Prince you do assignments. Prince of Tennis versus crunch. Micah Magical Girls. I think just, Prince just, of... just the main character versus all of them. I think Prince of Tennis would still win. Probably, that's the best part. Fucking created the Big Bang out of tennis balls. We haven't seen what Endgame Simpho Gear looks like, though. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see you get a D on the assignment. Yeah, right. There's absolutely no way something doesn't interrupt this uh, idyllic little uh, trip these two are gonna do. Well, I mean, I'm yeah, assuming. Very calm. I'm assuming that the shooting stars are just gonna be the noise at the end. Well, that would suck. <clears throat> Oh no, now she doesn't go on a date with her girlfriend. She has work. Yup. Work just sucks like that. Yeah, it's not like they don't know where you're at. Uh, you're literally ten stories above us. Y you could have sent her a text message that she's gonna be busy. Well, you know, they're just artificially generating drama. Right, right. Wow, I can't believe Hibiki loses her girlfriend in episode 3. Okay, okay, now they get the text message. Now, was this the girl that was at the grave? Yeah. I mean, this one in the bow tie thing. Yeah. So we know that we at least aren't going to get her death to make Hibiki regret... All this stuff. Hot dogs. Oh no. Just the tadpoles. 
No, no, those are the uh, the Half Life One enemies, the the Hound Eyes. I appreciate that the uh, the noise has the art style of Yuri Deco. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the story of the series. Do it. This is during the age of really awkward CGI. I kind of like watching the uh, silhouette jump back into the body in the transformation sequence. It's pretty nice. Oh yeah. Sort of reminds me of early Bleach, when Rukia had to punch Ichigo out of his body. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, the, the punches are so wimpy, <laughs> but they still work. Mm. Oh, you can't just hop the gate like that, you gotta put your ticket in. Alright, oh, that's a bunch new. of grapes. Yeah, a bunch of exploding grapes. No, the grapes are escaping. The fruit of the loom grape man is running away. <laughs> there you go, now you're putting some feeling into it. Now I feel like they're getting their ass beat. <laughs> Her sapphic rage is going to single-handedly end the noise. Now, if uh, Ibiki's friend was simultaneously being murdered right now, this would rem saying? this would remind. No, that's a good example though. I was thinking it would uh, remind me of Razefan. Razefan's most gut punch. Oh gosh. I'm waiting for like an aggress to uh He's going turn. movie He's going movie reg mode real early. Her music changes over to Screamo. Nah, I'm like mad invested in this show right now. Let me see the psycho rampage every time. Yeah, yeah. face tank bombs, let's go. The rest of the series goes elk and lie the whole way. Go kill the oh, kill God. Room, yeah, next thing we see is like someone just literally ripped in half, guts everywhere. <laughs> Damn, Grapes got moves. I can't remember, did they say anything in the beginning about Hibiki not saying she was a Simpo Gear? Like, are they a secret organization? I think they're not super publicly known. I don't remember them saying anything about it, but it would explain right. why she didn't tell her friend, if so. Yeah, that's all I can think of, because otherwise the solution to this is, Hey, best friend, I'm a superhero and I have to go kill the noise. I'll catch you next time. Right, right. The, the usual superhero contention. I mean, it's not as though if anybody sees them in public, they wouldn't recognize them, right? Mm -hmm. These aren't costumes that hide their identity. And... As far as we know, this is literally just outside the school. Wait, are we getting an antagonist? An evil Simpho Gear? Oh, maybe the countries fight one another. Okay, wow, okay, something about is about to happen. <laughs> that character design was so Gurren Logan it hurt. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking cyberpunk right there, but still, that's the... Uh... Hey, point is, it's uh, Gainax Studio Trigger, one of the two. Ah, true, true. Same studio, more or less. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, good Did introduction to it, I think. It feels like it. I don't remember oh, totally any is. of this imagery or sound. This really reminds me of a sci-fi novel I read once. Where the machines... Uh, which one um, got a camera. Down the Sea of Stars, I think. Like, the machines basically take over the galaxy. And this one machine is turning humans, or at least biological human parts, into like a uh, botany bay sort of thing. So it's like a grotesque imagery of human body parts strewn and growing around plants. Ah, okay, yeah, so same kind of imagery. Yeah, I get that. 
because like if this wasn't like uh rendered in precisely this way like it would be it could easily be like a ton creepier right which also kind of questions like wait why this imagery for this show in this moment but uh i like anti-form hibiki that was pretty good mm -hmm. that's where i'm at with this episode that's my only takeaway this oh, time it's yeah, sort of the more rage monster sort of reminds me of what's the uh fighting game with the cat girl, it's very popular. You're gonna have to be way more specific. I don't. Cat, uh, There's I like think Marvel versus Capcom. Every but I think every the single fighting game. It's white. Girl she's white and flesh colored. Felicia. Felicia. Yeah. Didn't Felicia have? Dark it's either. Talkers. It's either that or it's one of the Skull Girls ones, where their face just suddenly goes covered in black with red eyes, a big old Cheshire grin. That could be anything. Actually, are you thinking of Tau Kaka from Blaze Blue? Uh, well, it's definitely from a fighting game. I know Felicia yeah. also comes from an anime, but I'm talking, it's either this or it's from Skullgirls. But, um. Right. Is it this character? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's, I mean, that's it could how be. That's Kaka from Blaze Blue. It could be. It's a similar thing. But I thought Felicia might have also had a, a move. She goes shadow I, and red. I actually never played Darkstalkers. I don't know much about it either. I just I've seen that image, and I did barely registers in my head. But what we saw here, it very much reminded me of that. Right. In terms of like what it is or represents, like I I don't think it like was like an actual transformation or anything. It just it just her cutting loose and being very angry and representing that in a very uh, visual style. Right. Like I don't think like we're gonna get evil transformation Hibiki here, right? Oh, I don't know. I'll be significantly more interested if we do. <laughs> Not that I'm disliking the series by any means, but I will be significantly more invested if she has a rage mechanic. It it would definitely be a uh, quite a fun twist. If nothing I mean, else, think, like this series about is it. very interesting to watch. I mean, think about it. There was that whole like you can't sing without emotion line, and then Hibiki gets angry for the first time and goes on a legit rampage. If the Simpo mm -hmm. Gear responds to emotion like that, entirely possible we could see some rampaging. Yeah, the difference, I, like the reason for that, uh, might not be a theory, is because Subasa hasn't gone off the deep end, but she's also trying to cut herself off, even if she's like a fifteen-year-old right. girl and isn't actually as emotionless as she thinks she is. She's still the character most likely to retain her composure throughout literally everything because that's exactly her job, right? Well, it was yeah, explained when um, the red guy showed off his superpowers from out of nowhere. Why that, is he not out there fighting? Well, <laughs> he asks when he blocks the sword with his bare fist, you weren't actually trying to hit her, were you? And she doesn't yeah. answer it, but I mean, you get that, that gist that she was attacking her, but it was like a half-assed, I'm coming oh, at you. I don't know, that sword was pretty big. Yeah, I mean, it would have been hard to have missed, but they both have powers. She could have probably done the fist thing, too, since her punches are... Well, obviously, fist-based attacks. Yeah, I mean, what is going on with that dude? Right, if he can punch his strongest warrior sword into pieces, even if it's a weak attack, bro, you should be on the front lines. Are you kidding? I think Shockwave maybe the implication... Shield of enemies away. Yeah, I think the implication is that he had some sort of special gear, and it literally melted blocking it. Like a Simpho No, gear, no, maybe? his shoes exploded. That's all he said. My shoes exploded because I guess... The force of the punch pushed him back, and his shoes blew up around his feet. Yeah, so I think the shoes were a part of whatever gear let him do that. I highly doubt gone. that. That seems like a reach for me, Griff. You're just coming... I, I'm just trying to fill the gaps as best as I can. That's all I'm going to do. I mean, uh, my, my, bet, my bet is he took super steroids. I mean, anything is at play here. <laughs> He's got the Winter Soldier serum. Yeah. Or he got exposed to gamma radiation. Something happened. Bit Is by he a man or monster? You decide. Bit by a radioactive Macho Man Randy Savage. Bit by a radioactive. No, anime no, character. that is actually impossible because he doesn't run through any walls. Oh, true. You're right. My bad. My bad. Nor has he but snapped no, into any slim gyms. So that going back to like the man as well. But going back to the emotion thing, like I could see like a series that like isn't focused on like being uh, this specific brand of like idol music, instead like doing a genre shift depending on how the characters feel. 
uh, for the music. That would that would be an interesting series, uh, yeah, but probably a lot it. harder to do. It's fine. You couldn't just get one composer music. for that. We got this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let's see. So what else do we have to talk about other than the dancing hot dogs? Uh, Wars Against Nations, sponsored by singing musical artists. Yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a background detail going on, huh? Brings a new definition to world tour. <laughs> <laughs> Had that one cocked in my back pocket for a while. Now. What um, what was the thing the U.S. wanted? The the, the was it called the Daedalus or something? It started with yeah, a D. the Daedalus is the big is the big one. I yeah. don't think it was the Daedalus, but it started with a D though. Yeah, so, I, I can find the spot in the episode real quick. Because they wanted to hand it over to them or something like that, and they said it would be a big political Durandal, diplomatic. Maybe that Durandal. sounded yeah, right. Yeah, Durandal sounds right. It'd be a big diplomatic thing if they didn't. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Right. They're trying to figure out how to not give the Americans that without starting a legit conflict. Right, where on one hand, like, monopolizing the superpower that can stop the things that disintegrate everyone, you know, maybe not the best thing ever to be have happening. On the other hand, America will almost certainly monopolize it. Well, I mean, I don't think it was That's actually do, baby. sad or yeah. not if the, uh, the noise was a global threat. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, it, it I hasn't... I think it did say that, and I just don't remember. It's not entirely clear, I think. I mean, we're we focusing, could, we of course, assume... on the one place where the stuff is happening. I feel like maybe we can assume that they're attacking the entire world because they said it's a threat to humanity and not specifically Japan. I think it's the I problem think... of having I mean, your... that might be, like, semantics, but that's just, like, the best way to look at it. Like, why would they only be coming and landing on a tiny little island nation? Right, right. I think it's the problem of having your point of view only be in one location all the time. Yeah. Is that... But, I mean, if the U.S. wants a Simfo gear, I think that implies they have a noise problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd be like, what if somebody came up with another uh, super weapon better than nukes, right? And the U.S. Right. didn't have one. Right. Do you think we'd either... We'd probably start both a research project to like make one ourselves but also, you know, if we can get one diplomatically, that would really boost our way into figuring them out. Or this yeah. could just all be like the antagonists that we literally just saw. We got an episode next time to figure out what they're about. Although I do like the concept of, like, five-star general sitting in a meeting. We've got to figure out how these magic girl transformations work. Sir, we're going to have to dip into the boy band reserve. It, it'll it'll be just like that time when the uh, the U.S. Army was preparing for Area Fifty One, and they were educating soldiers about Naruto running. I keep I keep watching people react to the uh, the uh, internet historians. The, that video that which shows the clips of the one guy doing it in a conference meeting, plus the <laughs> plus the slide. Describing, the <laughs> yeah. The saddest, the saddest part of that is that the U.S. Army did not integrate Naruto running into their actual training. Take my head. <laughs> no it aerodynamic running for you doesn't uh, actually work. I know, I know, but that's <laughs> just imagine. Imagine you're you're some foreign country, and you you're just suddenly up against the United States military force, and it's just like out of nowhere they come charging, and you just hear that drum from fast? Naruto kick in. <laughs> That's all right though, because they're charging face first into our bullets, with their hands wildly out to their sides, unprepared to respond to any threat. What they don't well, know is that they're all shadow clones. All I know is that humanity is cursed to be at war. <laughs> oh man, Simpho um, Gear, Simpho Gear episode three, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, I think that was, in fact, episode three, and this is probably what we're going to go ahead and call it here. This has been another episode of Simfo Gear. Be sure to go ahead and keep uh, watching us on Patreon if you want to see more. And for right now, uh, I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and that is Shy, and we will catch you next time, everybody. See ya.